The head of the Democratic National Committee is demanding a re-canvas in Iowa after a series of problems delayed the caucus results. In a tweet, Tom Perez says, enough is enough in light of the problems that have emerged in the implementation of the delegate selection plan and in order to assure public confidence in the results, I'm calling on the Iowa Democratic Party to immediately begin a re-canvas. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns joins me now from New Hampshire. Caitlin, what exactly is a re-canvas? Hi there. Well, uh, this process is a total mess. I don't think there's another way to really describe this. And it's hard to see what a recanvas is different from what they're doing now. A recanvas is going through the paperwork uh, at the precinct level uh, and auditing it, essentially. And uh, we're hearing, you saw that statement from Tom Perez. We're now hearing from the Iowa Democratic Party uh, saying that they are still going through these results and want to be as accurate as possible. But they also are suggesting, at least as, as far as their statement, is concerned that a request for a canvas would have to come from a candidate or a campaign. Uh, so there are still questions about the weight that Tom Perez can have on this process, the DNC, uh, by requesting a, a re-canvas. And again, it's similar to what they're already doing. I will say, however, that the candidates themselves are really eager to move on and compete here in New Hampshire. It's, it's strange talking to you about Iowa while we're already in the ground uh, in New Hampshire, uh, but that is kind of the state of play at this mm -hmm. point. Still lots of questions remaining about uh, the winners in Iowa. You have Bernie Sanders just moments ago declaring victory, looking mm. at the popular vote count, which shows him ahead, and a very, very, very tight race between him and Pete Buttigieg at the top in terms of the state delegate equivalents, which is how they are counting the official tally in uh, in Iowa. Uh, so lots of questions still remain, uh, and we, we will see kind of how this goes throughout the day. A lot of news to be to be made. Yeah, there certainly is. You mentioned Bernie Sanders, who declared victory despite this re-canvas. I want to play for you a little bit of what he had to say just a few minutes ago. Even though the vote tabulations have been extremely slow, we are now at a point with some 97 percent of the precincts reporting where our campaign is winning the popular initial vote by some 6,000 votes. In other words, some 6,000 more Iowans came out on caucus night to support our candidacy than the candidacy of anyone else. And when 6,000 more people come out for you in an election uh, than your nearest opponent, uh, we here in northern New England call that a victory. So, Caitlin, is the strategy going to work? Go ahead and declaring victory at this point and move, moving forward to New Hampshire. Well, the Sanders campaign has always been focused on that popular vote and especially talking about it here in New Hampshire, where they're going to have a primary. So the popular vote matters here in, in New Hampshire. Uh, the Iowa caucus is a caucus. Uh, you can win the popular vote, but it's more like an electoral college there. In New Hampshire, they pride themselves on having a primary with paper ballots. We're hearing that a lot from voters that we talk to on the ground here in New Hampshire as they're looking at what happened in Iowa. They're taking pride in their own primary process, first in the nation primary, uh, with paper ballots, and uh, that's where the vote count really matters here. So that's why you're hearing the Bernie Sanders campaign talk about the popular vote, something they've been focused on in Iowa since the beginning, but also especially here in New Hampshire. Remember, Bernie Sanders won New Hampshire in the 2016 primary against Hillary Clinton overwhelmingly. He uh, is uh, in the lead here in the polls, or at least uh, tied at the top. Uh, you have other candidates who are trying to um, move on from Iowa and compete here in New Hampshire. Elizabeth Warren, uh, Joe Biden especially, uh, and, um, and Pete Buttigieg, who is uh, looking at that tight, close finish coming in in Iowa and trying to gain momentum here in New Hampshire from it. I want to also ask you about former Vice President Joe Biden. He's going after his Democratic rivals. I want to play for you what he said about Pete Buttigieg last night. Mayor Pete likes to attack me as well. He's a good man. He calls himself a, a he talk, calls me part of the old failed Washington. Does he really say that Obama-Biden administration was a failure? Pete, just say it out loud. I have great respect for Mayor Pete and his service to this nation. But I do believe 
It's a risk to be just straight up with you. For this party to nominate someone who's never held an office higher than mayor of a town of 100,000 people in Indiana. I do believe it's a risk. So we saw Biden is going after Buttigieg. You mentioned that Sanders is kind of the front runner there in New Hampshire. How's he going after Sanders at this point? Uh, yes. Yeah, so so uh, the, the former vice president is coming off really devastating results in Iowa as as the race is still close at the top. It shows Biden in about fourth place there. Uh, and, he, and he admitted yesterday uh, while campaigning here in New Hampshire that he took a gut punch in Iowa. Uh, so he is now going after Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. You saw those really sharpened attacks against Pete Buttigieg. Uh, the former mayor of Indiana today uh, has been saying if, if he's being criticized by Joe Biden for uh, not having significant victories in, in Indiana, he's now pointing to the results of the Iowa caucus that shows him ahead of uh, the former vice president. So that's his line uh, in response to uh, Biden there. Biden's also going after Bernie Sanders. We've seen that in the past, but his attacks now against the Vermont senator uh, are all about electability. Yesterday, he said that if Bernie Sanders is the nominee, then every Democrat running on the ticket will have to be, uh, will have the Democratic Socialist label applied uh, to, to them. So that's something that we're hearing now from, from the Biden campaign as it's trying to reshuffle and, and regain some momentum. Biden has always been really focused on South Carolina, where he enjoys mm -hmm. a strong support among African-American voters and uh, possibly in Nevada, which also hold, holds a caucus right before South Carolina. They say that's a big part of their firewall. But if he didn't do well in Iowa. If he doesn't do well here in New Hampshire, it will raise questions about whether he can get to that point. Uh, you know, you mentioned that. I'm curious about money as well, Caitlin. You know, money does matter in a presidential race. Does he have enough to keep going? Absolutely money matters, and that is a concern for the Biden campaign, especially with news just this morning that Bernie Sanders is reporting that he raised $25 million just in the month of January. And so when you're looking at how the competition is going to unfold here, we're talking about these early states. We also should be focusing on the Super Tuesday states, big states like Texas and California that require tons of money. Uh, that that calculation calculation is really important, especially because a candidate that we haven't been talking about recently, Mike Bloomberg, is spending money really at a record pace, spending his own money on the air in all these early states. You can't watch TV without seeing an ad from Michael Bloomberg these days. That is something that is very much uh, on the minds of a lot of these Democrats as they're trying to raise money here. I absolutely right. Caitlin Huey Burns, I want to thank you very much for joining us from a very cold, what appears to be a very cold, New Hampshire. Thanks, Caitlin. <laughs>